Well, what's going on YouTube? Um, coming back to you with another instructional video and it's going to be a learning thing for me and for uh, you guys as well. What I'm going to do is, um, I guess I'm taking a break from the long range thing. I'm going to take my Phantom Vision motors off and I'm going to replace them with these bad boys here. Some T motors, the MN2214 version 3 motor. And you can get these from getfpv.com. Uh, here's the numbers. If you need to know anything, SKU numbers, all that good stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, I went ahead and purchased the uh, carbon fiber props that T-Motor makes. And I'm going to do a comparison. I've recently just went out and recorded with the same battery. I fully charged the battery and I just let it do a hover the best I could. I had to help it occasionally because it would lower itself down, but I didn't bump it much. I went out with the original motors and um, I'm going to do a video side by side of, you know, to see if it, if these motors give you any better performance uh, in terms of uh, time, uh, flight time. And uh, I'm going to do a side by side comparison hover test, hopefully. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with the regular props on there and then I'm going to do it with these T motor props and see if either of the three are any better than the other. So next step is taking the Phantom apart. Uh, you can look on other videos on how to do that, but basically you just flip her over on her back and you remove this screw here and these three right here all the way around. And you take your stickers, if you have any at all, Either slice them with a razor blade or either peel them up, take the shell off, and you'll see the ESCs. And I'll, next scene will be where I have mine opened up, so I'm not going to go through all that talking. And then you'll take these four uh, bolts here on either side, and you will remove them after you have unsoldered the motors, and you'll solder in the new ones. So, anyhow, I just want to go and get back. And also, I want to share this advice. I found this awesome desoldering iron. This is perfect. I've never been able to desolder anything, but if you guys want to get something great for desoldering, Radio Shack has this thing. Um, let me see if there's a number on it. Uh, here's the UPC number and all. But basically, this thing gets hot, just like a soldering iron. You squeeze the bulb, you touch it to the wherever you're trying to desolder, you let go, and it sucks it up in there. You don't have to do all that touching it with this and trying to suck it up with another. So, anyhow. See you next thing. Uh, before I get started, let's go ahead and do a, just a quick way of, let's see how they sound before and after. So here we go, we're going to engage the motors. This is idle speed, this is stock motors. Alright, just so you guys can see, this is what the Phantom looks like with the shell off. Uh, these connectors here are what we'll be desoldering and resoldering. Um, the main thing is to remember which ones are clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, apparently, we have a counterclockwise here, which is black, and clockwise, which are silver. Uh, same thing for the other. Uh, it's important to notate because you have instructions in the T-Motor thing here telling you the proper way to wire it up. Uh, right here and right here. Uh, and this is what the motors look like. Uh, I, I'm going to leave the cover connected with the, I guess that's the uh, compass. I know it's the compass. Um cable running up because it was kind of giving me a fit trying to unhook it I think I should be able to work around that you know just move it over here and move it over there and uh should be good to go so anyhow I guess I need to get the camera ready and my soldering or desoldering iron ready and see if we can get these connectors here cleaned off a little bit and I'll see you in a bit 
All right, so yeah, um, I'm gonna try this new solder sucker. I'm probably just gonna show you on this one arm, and uh, I'll just do the rest of them. There's no sense in you guys watching me do every one of them, but anyways, the general idea behind this thing is to get it good and hot. Go ahead and squeeze your bulb. Touch the solder until it melts. And this might not be hot enough yet. Thought it would have been hot enough. Apparently not. Oh yeah. Squirt it out somewhere else. I'm alright at soldering. I am not so good at desoldering. Got that one almost all off. That's just some some hard solder. This does a really good job though. Okay, yeah, pretty much, well, I guess there's a little more left. It pretty much got all that solder off, looks like. I hate when it feels like the stuff doesn't get hot enough. Anyways, I got A. Let's move on to B. Let's see. Alright, they are pretty much desoldered. Uh, however, I don't know, it's not trying to let go that well. Not the best person to watch for this, to be honest with you. Turn loose, would you? Oh, that ain't good. You don't want to melt your phantom frame for sure. But, oh well, it happens. Alright, well, anyhow, let me cut this camera off so I can get these things desoldered. Alright, so yeah, there you have it. That was embarrassing. I'm sorry. So yeah, the little solder sucker tool is awesome. It'll suck most of the solder off, but you're going to take your soldering iron and just heat it and pull as you melt and you'll get nice little clean, shiny joints like this to have something to bond to for the next. Of course, you'll want to add some um, solder on there as well. But uh, anyhow, got these all unsoldered. Uh, what I'm going to do now gonna work on my counterclockwise and I'm gonna wire it up the way that they have counterclockwise wired which is you know here three or let's see they got this is wire number three two and one so uh, let me get that done and I'll 
I guess I'm going to go ahead and do all four of them. There's no sense in you guys watching. And we'll see how she runs. Alrighty, see you in a minute. Well, here we go. I've got all the connectors soldered. Uh, not the best solder in the world, but I think they seem to look okay. I pulled on all of them and they're not turning loose. I might go along and put some goop or something on top of them to assure that they're not going to turn loose. Like that one there doesn't look that great, but it actually, you'll see, it's, it's I mean, it's not moving, it's there. So, well, here we go. We're going to slide the shell back on. I've got the GPS and everything hooked back up. Slide the shell over the top of the motors. Of course, it's not going to be a tight, tight fit. But uh, let me click the battery in here and we'll see what she sounds like. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I guess I'm not. Here goes nothing. We are going to make sure these motors turn. And they do. Here goes what they sound like. Turn the right direction. Let's see. I'm not so sure. All right. Well, we put a prop on it and see what's going on. All right. Don't know if you could tell or not in the video, but. Tiger motor has still got their directions wrong. Their counterclockwise and clockwise are wrong. They, you wire them backwards. You leave number two where it is and you swap one and three. So, anyhow, let's see now if our props will turn the right way. Or if they'll, let's see if they'll all turn first. Turn them on. Right, they're wired up again. Let's see how they're turning now. I think that's right. What I'm gonna do now is take it, take the shell back, or you know, put the shell back on, put my props on it, and let it idle, and make sure they don't fly off and take off everywhere across the room. And I think we're done with this little project. Alrighty, see you later. All right, here we go. Time to turn her on and see if the props fly off. That would be a good video, wouldn't it? Coming on. They seem pretty responsive. Really smooth sounding. If you can hear that in the video.
Yeah. And they're going to be fine. I hope they are. Gosh, I hope they don't come loose in the air. I'm definitely not an expert solder, but look at that power. Ooh, shut her down. I'll do a test flight tomorrow. Um, sorry I didn't show you a whole lot about installing the actual motor itself. Like I said, these instructions here. Let me get this solder and iron off this air hockey table before I burn it all up. Hang on, let me unplug my solder and iron. Okay. Oh, these instructions here. They show you for a clockwise motor to connect it like this. Well, you don't. You put number two always goes in the middle. The middle wire always goes to the middle. You'll need to swap that number one and number three uh, and do the same thing for the counterclockwise motor connection. Uh, they've got it, they've got them backwards. So just scratch out counterclockwise and put clockwise or whatever you need to do. Um, just pretty straightforward. You just basically have four holes in the bottom. You unsolder the connections. You take the four screws out. Boop. Take it out, put the new one in, put the same four screws back in there, solder your new wires on, and you're done. So, anyhow, like I said, we'll do this flight test tomorrow, and I'm going to see if this thing hovers better, or if it, um, you know, if it gives me more flight time, or whatever. And, uh, maybe we have some improvement. I doubt it, but they look cool. They're good and white. But, uh, anyhow... We shall see you in the next video.